Hi everybody, uh, good afternoon. Um, today is Friday the 17th of July 2020. This is our 4pm uh, movement snack, uh, Sway and Stretch. So if you're watching this on Catch Back, uh, catch, back catch Up, and uh, this is not the one that you want, then flip back through uh, sessions that you'll find on our Facebook group. They're all there. Uh, find the one you want, and then I'll see you on the Catch Up a little bit later on. Um, likewise, if you are um, on Catch Up, and you don't want to listen to the bit of preamble beforehand, then you can scoot through to the start of the, the session as well. Start through where we actually start doing uh, circulation boosting. Um, this is all about additional movement minutes, as we know. One of the good things about catch up, if you uh, if you use it, uh, but also, you know, even if you are watching it live and you want to look back at it afterwards, it gives you the opportunity to pause, have a look at what's happened, get to grips with it and do it basically. <laughs> so, so if there's something you're uns unsure about, you can go back, have a look at it. Okay. Have I, have I got that? How I think I've, I've seen it. Um, and go for it from there. Cause we're all about, um, focusing on the movements. So thinking about, uh, the movements that we make, how we make those movements, um, what part of our body is, is stabilizing us as another part is moving. How does that movement feel? You know, they're all movements that we do in everyday life. There's there's no big surprises in there. Um, but it's, we never really do them in isolation. So the ability of doing these movement snacks is to be able to focus on how something feels, um, how it how it works. You know, how does our body feel when, when we're swaying from side to side? You know, uh, which part of us is supporting the other part? How does it feel when we shift the weight from one side to another or forward and back? That's a great thing about it. And a good thing, as I say about the, um, a good thing I say about the uh, catch-ups is that gives you the ability to pause it, have a look, analyze it if you want to, and then um, have a go as well, you know, or make sure you've got something, uh, you've, you've seen what you think you've seen and go for it from there. Anyway, enough of my rambling. Let's have a chat. What have you been up to? How's things been with you? Um, a day of deadheading in the garden here uh, in Coventry. It's been a lovely day. Uh, a few clouds in the sky now, but still plenty of blue sky. A little bit of a light breeze, which has been uh, lovely. Cat's been enjoying it, lounging in the garden. Um, so uh, let me know how you are. Let me know what you've been up to. How have you got on since your uh, lunchtime snack? Since we had some... Uh, the camera malfunctions at lunchtime. <laughs> I did laugh. Um, not in a nasty way. <laughs> Just poor Kelsey. Uh, good afternoon, Christine. Uh, Christine P and Christine L are both in. Good afternoon to you. Shrewsbury is in. You've been in the garden as well, accompanied by the red ants. Oh, uh, surprising how fast you can move <laughs> when you need to, I know. <laughs> I know you're feeling there, Wendy. Good to have you on board. Good to have you with us. Um, Hopefully no little bites from those uh, little critters. Um, what have you been up to then? So how's your crowbar aiming going today? Have you managed to crowbar in some more additional movements? We're about, you know, uh, <laughs> we're about, sorry, I've just seen Bex's comment come up. Um, it's the beer. That's all I'm saying. Um, we're all about additional movement minutes over and above everything you're doing, but you know, it is exactly that. It's above what you're already doing. Um, so keep keep adding into it and let us know your success stories. Let us know how you're getting on. How are you finding things easier? Are you finding things moving differently? Are you more aware of how things are moving? Because that's what it's all about, is us thinking and focusing and understanding how the movement happens. As I, say, as I was saying before, um, a lot of what we do they're everyday activities. They're things that we do day in, day out. Um, but we never actually sit and think about them as a movement in its own right. We just do it. And every now and again, it's good to stop and focus. So our sway and stretch, which we're about to get into in a few minutes time, um, is about um, three dimensional movements. Um, and again, we do this every day, but we never think about it. We never break it down into an individual move. So if, we, if we're turning to reach for some, something, if we think about um, Kelsey's robotic uh, packing at lunchtime, um, we don't 
turn to one side, lower the hands down, pick them up into the center, across the other way. It would tend to be that fluid motion of, you know, you could still break it down into an individual movement, but it's it's fluid. We don't pause after each one. Um, so doing these three-dimensional movements gives us a chance to feel exactly how how does that feel and how does it work and, and what does it mean to the body and, and what's happening within the body. Anyway, enough of me rabbiting on again. Uh, hi, Maddie. Good afternoon to you. Good to have you in. Uh, getting hot where you are now. That's good. Good afternoon, Gillian. Uh, welcome, to, welcome on board. Good to have you with us as well. It is four o'clock, so should we have our three, two, one? Okay, three, two, one. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dave Montgomery from Later Life training uh today is friday the 17th of july 2020 this is our 4 p.m movement snack our sway and stretch um our third opportunity of the day to put additional movement minutes into our benefits bag to add on to everything we've already done um we're going to do this in either a, a, a supported standing position uh, a standing position with support available to us or into an active seated position. The choice is yours. Um, the choice is totally yours. Before we do that, we're gonna have a circulation booster. And before we even do that, we're gonna have a look at our posture. So bring yourself in, decide if you wanna think about doing it in a standing or a seated position. If you wanna get rid of the comments, swipe them to the right and they will go. Um, and we'll go with our feet movement first. So uh, once we set our posture, Heels in line with knees, knees in line with hips. Lift a little bit extra. So lift taller between your ribs and your hips. Grow about an inch between there. Shoulders up, roll them back, bring the shoulder blades together and press your shoulder blades down, lengthening through the neck, okay? Good strong posture. And in our seated position, um, from our backwards seating position, a little hip walk into the front third of the chair and then set ourselves up. Knees in line with hips, heels in line with uh, knees. Sitting bones, sit tall on them, yes? So feel yourself lift up out of that chair a little bit. Grow between your ribs and your hips, shoulders up, back, shoulder blades together and press down, lengthening through the neck. From there, let's start with our feet and go for a foot pedal. Now, with our foot pedal, we're coming up onto the balls of the feet and just onto the toes as well. So we've got a little crease behind our toes between the toes and the ball of our foot. And then we're coming down onto the heel, yeah? If you feel comfortable with it, then your option is to take it to a march, okay? And with this, we actually bring the foot off the floor. It's not a huge movement. We're bringing the foot off the floor, pointing the toes towards the floor, and then again, down onto the toes, that little crease behind the toes and the ball of the foot, into the ball of the foot, and through to the heel. So it's a quiet movement. Yeah, there's no stomping or stepping with this. Now in a seated position, you have the option to stay with your foot pedal, or if you prefer, a foot tap in front. So you've got that forward motion as well within there. All right, all the time, keeping the posture strong. Let's put an arm movement in as well. One arm, swinging from your shoulders. In a standing position, we've got our support available to us. Have a look at this arm. Yeah, the movement is from our shoulder. So we're driving the elbow backwards. So we're really mobilizing into that shoulder. It's not a big move like this. Yeah, it's controlled. The rest of the body is staying tall. Now in our standing position, if we're utilizing our support, every now and again, take a pause, change side, and away you go on the other side. The other option, of course, obviously, if you have your support in front of you and it's the right height, this is a little bit low for me, um, to be doing from was on risk of banging knees, but you can then just change arms there. But make sure your support is at the right height. If you feel steady and stable in standing, let's bring both arms in as well. Okay, again, still focusing on that foot movement. So toes towards the floor, rolling through to our heels. In our seated position, both arms as well. Another alternative for you in your seated position is this canoeing type action. So fingertips together driving it in towards you, elbows in towards the side of the body and focusing and feeling that movement through your shoulder while you're keeping your feet moving as well. Okay, so this is our circulation booster. It gives us a little boost, does exactly what it says. Gets the blood pumping a bit more. We're getting more oxygen into the body. We're opening the arteries, so we're allowing more blood to get to, uh, to the muscles where we need it. We're warming those muscles, we're warming the joints, and we're mobilising the joints. 
Good idea to do this. Have you been sat down for a while? Or every now and again during the day, just give, you, give your circulation a little boost. After about a couple of minutes, you should feel as though you want to take a bit of a deep breath. One or two deep breaths, but you shouldn't feel out of breath. Have a pause there. Let's have a look at our movement once more, our, our three-dimensional movement. So, in this standing position, the movement in its entirety, where we are now in this, uh, on Friday, we bring the arms out to the side with a little bend of those knees. We bring the arms in and across to one side, shifting the weight. Pull down across the body with the weight coming across to the other side. Into the centre, standing tall. We're then going to bring the arms up push away, lower down, and as we do, we bend those knees again a little bit, and back up, standing tall in towards our hips, and then across to the other side. Now, that little bend of the knees, we're not coming forward, yeah? So it's a little bend of the knees with the bottom going backwards, a little hinge here at the hip, so we're staying upright. In our seated position, then instead of a, um, a little knee lift, we're gonna bring ourselves up onto our toes. So the movement here would be up onto the toes, hands as high as you can and lower down, across to the side, pull across the body, in towards the centre, come up, push away, and raise up as you come down and back in. Now in your seated position, that shift of weight happens in these seated bones. So as you come across here, there's a shift of weight onto that uh, one buttock, and as you come across, you shift it to the other, but the bottom stays in contact with the with the seat the whole time, just like your feet stay in contact with the floor. Okay, so that's our movement. We put our, we put head movements into it as well yesterday. So decide how you're going to do it, whether you're going to do it in a seated or a standing position. I'll show you a um, a single arm version as well before we do that in our standing position. So if you want to utilize your support from here, we've got this motion out here. We're going to bring it across the body so that we can shift the weight down across the other side, back into the centre, standing tall, lifting up, pushing your way, coming down and raising. So that little bend of the knees again before you raise. What I would suggest in that uh, instance is you do it a couple of times on that side, take a pause, as many steps as you need to change your support to the other side and away you go on the other side. Right, so our head movements, let's include those as well. So we come out, the arms come into the front, follow the arm across, bring it across the body and follow, back into the centre, bringing the head up, we raise, we push away, we come down as we bend the knees, the head comes down as well, pausing there, and then away again on the other side, yeah? So again, we bring across, across the body, into the center, tall. Now slow, rhythmic, controlled movements is the name of the game here. So think about it, as you're doing it, feel the movement coming through your arms, feel the movement through your head. Feel how the weight shifts from one side to the other on your feet or onto your bottom. Feel that rotation that you have slightly through the trunk. Feel the muscles as you push away, coming down, raising up. Again, out to the side, across to the other side, pushing down. Now this sway comes out no further than the side of your foot. So you've always got your body in line with your foot on the outer side, purely shifting that weight from side to side. So there's your three dimensional movement. And as I said in our, our little intro, we do these sort of movements all the time. So you know, we may reach for something and we'll shift the weight across onto the side as we reach. We may bring it back in. Yeah. And we do that without even thinking about it. This is a great opportunity to just focus on those individual movements. What's happening? What part of my body is moving? What part is staying? Where is the balance coming from? 
what are the muscles doing? And it's great for the brain as well to have a little bit of, actually, yeah, let me practice this. So when I go across this way, I'm having to tighten this muscle, I'm having to loosen that muscle. And I shift the weight again, I'm having to do the opposite. And the muscles are working and the joints are working and how do they feel and what does the trunk do? Yeah, because the trunk is involved in all of that movement as well as keeping you uh, stable, as are our ankles. So it's good practice for the brain, for the muscles and for the joints to understand what's happening while we're doing that. So that's a good reason to actually hone it down to that. There's your three-dimensional movement for today. We'll add a little bit more on tomorrow to just uh, crease it. It won't change in any. What we'll do is we'll change the format of it slightly. Let's move on to our stretches. So firstly, with our calf, have your support in front of you, step back. What you're gonna do is come down onto the toes of the foot first, onto the ball, and then roll through to the heel. With your support in front, come into the support, bending that front knee, but this knee comes no further forward than your shoelaces. You should feel the stretch into your calf, so from your knee down towards your heel. Now, if you can't feel it, if you're having to bring this knee too far forward, have a pause, take it a little bit further back, so you've got a bit of a bigger stride, and try and focus on getting those knees and those toes pointing in the same direction. That's your standing position, okay? 12 to 20 seconds on one side, change to your other, then have a go again on either side. In our seated position, what we're going to do is take a foot out, heel down, sitting tall, knee soft. We're going to ease the heel away and bring the toes in towards our shin so that we lengthen through the back of the, the leg. Now with a stretch, you should feel it but it shouldn't hurt. So we should feel that muscle lengthening, but we should have no pain there. Knee staying soft. Again, after our 12 to 20 seconds, ease out of it, bring the foot back in and feel that stretch end. Other leg, out. In our standing position, if you want to do the other side again, feel free. Knee staying soft, easing that heel away, bringing the toes in towards us, but keeping the knee soft and sitting tall. Think about our posture the whole time. You know, we'll tend to just come back into our old posture. So every now and again, just have a little reset. Bring the knees, bring the shoulders back and down and reset it. Holding it again, 12 to 20 seconds, and then ease out, step in and feel the stretch ending. Okay, moving on to the back of the thigh. Let me show you in our, our seated position firstly. So same starting position, but the toes are a bit more relaxed this time, okay? Sit tall, as we are anyway, but lift that extra inch out from our ribs and our hips. Hands on the bent knee, and then hinge from your hip forwards. You can feel that lengthening of the muscle into the back of the thigh. If you can feel it in your calf as well, then ease your toes down a little bit more. So release and relax those toes a little bit more. Again, 12 to 20 seconds. When it's finished, step back in, feel the stretch end, and go on to the other side. Carry on with that if you're in a seated position. In a standing position, what you're going to do here, step forward on the foot this time, toes pointing in the same direction again. Again with our weight in front, lift tall, lift that extra inch from here, shoulders back, and hinge from the hip again, coming in. So, our uh, knee is bending because we're hinging. Back is straight, so we've got a nice straight line from our head down to our bottom. Stretches into the back of the thigh. In both seated or standing, if you feel it start to ease off, have a breathe in, and as you breathe out, just take it a little bit further. In this standing position, push your bottom away a little bit more. 12 to 20 seconds again, and ease out of it. Change your other leg, and as you come out of it, feel that stretch ending. So feel the lengthening of the muscle ending, and muscle relaxing a little bit. Do it the same again on the other side, and if you're in a seated position, if you want to do both sides again, feel free. Now with this one, uh, I'll come this way to, show, to do it for you. So we're leaning forward. So the stretch is here. The reason I say if it starts to ease off, take a breath in and try and take it a little bit further. This is a muscle that's great from our flexibility point of view. So regardless, even if we're standing here, we need flexibility in that to be able to reach down and pick up. So if that stretch starts to ease off, while it's there, a little bit further, as long as there's no pain, and you're gonna to help to increase the length of that muscle a little bit further, so give you a bit more flexibility. All right, have a pause after you've done those 10 to 20, uh, sorry, 12 to 20 seconds. Chest, hands into the small of the back, palms in or palms out. 
Choice is yours. Standing or seated, we ease the shoulders back. So we ease the shoulder blades together, lengthening across the top of the chest. Now in our seated position, another option for you as well is to actually utilize the chair. So place your hands onto the chair as a reference point and ease your shoulder blades together, drawing them together, opening across the chest. Chin staying parallel, eye line to the front, feeling that lengthening of the muscles across the front of the body. 12 to 20 seconds, ease out of that. All right, two last stretches. So firstly, hand onto your shoulder and we'll all do this in our seated position. Now, if you're coming from a standing position to a seated position, feel the chair behind you. So feel it on the back of your legs, lower yourself down with control into that chair and then hip walk into the front third of the chair. Yeah, place one hand on your shoulders, ease the elbow up and walk the fingers down the back of the shoulder blade. Just take it to where you feel the stretch here. Keep the chin level though, so don't bring it down onto your chest. We're trying to keep this neck long as well. And then two options from there, either hand up if you feel comfortable with it, take your hand down to the chair and reach taller. Or if you don't want to take your hand above your head, from there, bring your hand down, reach a little bit taller, but lean across, lengthening these muscles down through the side of the body here is what we're trying to do, all right? 12 to 20 seconds on that side, and then change to the other side. Now as you come out of it, ease your arm down. Walk the finger blades, uh, fingertips down the shoulder blade. Hand up, down, and reach tall, or hand staying there. Hand comes down to the chair, reach a little bit taller, and then across. And we're lengthening through the side of the body. Muscles between our rib cage, between each of the ribs, there's a muscle. It helps with us breathing in and breathing out. So it's continually working, help that hand down. So it's great to give it a stretch every now and again. One last stretch for you to do. Take one hand, place it on your shoulder, bring your other hand round and give yourself a hug. We all need a hug every now and again, don't we? And feel a lengthening of that muscle across the top of your back. So when we talk about our posture, we talk about bringing the shoulder blades together. Release out and the other way around. So we draw the shoulder blades together to, to bring us into that good postural position. So that muscle across the top of your back and between your shoulder blades especially works really hard. So here's a, a little stretch for it. 12 to 20 seconds again. Shake it out and just give your shoulders a roll. Okay, so there we are, we're done. That is the end of our movement snack for today. Um, keep thinking about movement, keep thinking about um, the three-dimensional movement, have a go at it, have a crack at it. If you want to take it uh, with the head movements in or you want to just do feet or arms, seated or standing, choice is yours. It's there for you to play with. It's there for you to have a go at. But try and keep mobility and movement on your radar for the rest of the day, okay? Uh, that's me done for this afternoon. I'll be with you tomorrow. Uh, I'll be with you at lunchtime tomorrow and four o'clock tomorrow. So have a great evening, everybody. Uh, keep your comments coming back in. Keep crowbarring in those additional movement minutes and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.